it's day 505. The first load of oilseed rape has arrived of the season to go into the store. So I'm going to get that sampled and put in the shed. So we need a big blue step to climb up to the wagon and put the spear in to get the sample. Hey, boss, there's another one here as well. Oh, look, a shed full of dust and a Merlot part of them with the door open. First load all sampled and getting tipped off. Meet and spec. Just watch we don't hit the roof. Shoving the oilseed rape up now, so every load that comes in we push it up tight and then we can get the wagons closer together and then it means less work. If you, if you tip them and then tip two, you have to push one over the top of the other one and it makes it difficult, so we just try and keep on top of it as it comes in and stockpile it. Someone bothered a divider the other day, the damage fairy, but uh, we're not, we know who it is but we're not saying. And it wasn't me. Anyway, it's just getting straightened now. It's just basically bent this here as it was going in the shed at night. Just come to pick some tools back up that we were using yesterday. And the door is now set and all gone off. We had to put some clamps on for the foam because the screws to go for the top weren't working properly, but looks all right. Just needs cleaning off now and pointing up. The tide has gone out a little bit on the flood in the picnic area, but I might just get some um, yellow plastic ducks and leave them floating in there just because they look good. All fixed now, just needs a little lick of paint. Got three loading already before nine o'clock, probably about 100 ton. Just at the field they got the wheat off. They're all setting up now, ready to start marking out for the roads. But obviously there's quite a bit of stubble and straw, so they want us to chop it up a bit. So it makes it easier for them to see what they're doing. This is the other field that they're going to start stripping the topsoil off on Thursday. So I'm just looking now, see if we can get in and cut it. Now it's a little bit green on the headlands, but that's only because they lie wet. But the rest of the field isn't so bad. It's, uh, it's quite dry to be fair. Well, it's, it's wet, but it's cuttable. So we'll get our dinner, get in here, get this cleared. And then I'm not going to sort of breathing down my neck with the bulldozers again. Big crusher bucket and a big screener bucket to drive. Size of the overhang on that. Waste five and a half on that crusher bucket. Is this the competition? Weighing up the class. Apparently there's an ideal coming this week, isn't there, Gary? <laughs> See what weather does. We're back on the spring barley now. Obviously a little bit wet in places on this field, but it doesn't matter because it's going to be houses next year. Quite a profitable rotation, which it was mine, but yeah, uh, wheat, barley, bungalows. I don't know whether it shows up on the camera, but it is still a bit green, this barley, but it'll dry or ripen quicker in the shed with the drying floor than it will in the field this week when we need to be on cutting wheat and oilseed rape. So we're having to cut it today, get it to the shed, get it dried, otherwise it's lost to the bulldozers. So it's it's in places it's a lot better, but here where it's a bit heavier ground along the ditch, it's kind of hung on and started growing a bit, it's been growing a bit longer. This bit here the pigeons have eaten because they've been stood on that fence and jumping off to eat it, and then there it's full of water. So I made up and cutting it because it's one less for the pigeons to eat as well. Waiting for a trailer, but it's here now. Take that off the wall because it's not day 501. Been an expensive day today. I've um, <laughs> had to sign up for paperwork for that tractor, even though it's been here four months. And um, did the paperwork for the fast track, which apparently is due today, tomorrow, or the day after. So, yeah, I'm just going to cut this barley now. Just unloading before I go for that wet hole in case it's really wet. See it flowing out of the tank now. This bit here, totally right to be honest. Good ground, just this bit. This bit apparently they're not building on. This is going to be a uh, floodplain. So 
so it would be a shame to be a full plane, it'd be better off they just like left us farming this bit and then they just built over there. But yeah, it's good. You can see now actually a bit green in the tram lines, but like I say, you can get dried. Put the straw on the floor on this one. Not like everyone said to mess the builders around, but they actually want the straw baling and then they've got to make a bund along there wrapping bales of straw in a fabric to stop any water runoff that might go into the ditch so we're going to bale the straw off this field for them to use we'll probably end up baling it damp because it's so green the straw and i don't know whether we're going to get good enough weather this week to bale it dry but we'll put it on the straw see what we can do and then they're only going to wrap it in a fabric and leave it all winter anyway so it doesn't matter if it's a bit damp um, the problem with a flex header is it can actually flex but not float on the water so you can get the belts picking up water. There we go, there's a wet bit now. Laser on, the GPS on, we'll get straight now. Oops, pull it wrong, press it too soon. There we go. Get a bit less anyway, get it across it. Lots of people have been asking about Adam's tractor. It's nearly fixed. He's basically got to have a new head on it. And John Deere are going to give a massive 15% discount on the head. It's a bit of a shame. The tractor's only done 3,800 hours and it's just over four years old. You shouldn't have that sort of thing failing. But anyway, they've, they've, they've given him a big discount there anyway, we'd, we'd say. Not a lot left now. So I'm just filling the third trailer. It's not doing that well, to be honest. But it's, uh, it is a wet field. It's one that I won't particularly miss over here lies really wet if you get any sort of like high wave full event in the growing season on this field kind of proper caps the yield in places getting a bit full there I'm going to stop just top him up stationary I think I should have half rated it you can see the augers behind can you but normally when you're cutting really wet stuff like to this or the other day when we were cutting it in the rain it wouldn't come out the bottom of the tank but because this has got these massive sort of output through the auger it means the flights on the bottom it has like you've got like an auger that spins like a, a spiral and it used to have like a v-shape on the top to stop the weight pushing down on them so they could start up but this because it's so fast at unloading and so powerful it doesn't have much of a V so it means it really grabs the grain even if it's sticky and wet so what I've done this year with this combine I wouldn't have been able to do with any of the other ones that have gone before it because they don't have that huge gap between the, the bottom of the tank and the flights so it's just one of them things you don't even think about but it's made the job easier because there's plenty of times when we put wet grain but to get in with it sticking like poke it down or shovel it because this it's just done it it's great in these conditions you nearly need scrapers on them wheels on the header the class I've ever thought about that. You can see it like falling soil up on them. This is where they were driving through with a little telescopic putting that fence up and I, I've kind of driven over it with the chopper on because I was on the phone when I cut this bit but there's a few areas like this where they've been in drilling like a piling rig thing or test holes over the, over the field that they flattened it a bit as well you can see some of the real marks there. That pheasant's going to have to try and find a new home, unless it's going to live in someone's garden. Where's he gone? There he is. Well, we watch barley growing here for you to eat soon. Good thing about thinnish crops is you can cruise at nearly nine hectares an hour. It's about 22 acres an hour, is it? Something like that. Someone else will do the maths. There's a quiz question for you. What's nine hectares an hour and acres an hour? I'm only using 26% of the engine as well. That's because there's not a lot of straw going through it because it's only like a foot high. 
there's a little bit there that's been damaged by him doing the fence. End of an era for this field anyway, it's last harvest. Ed is just going in the shed now. Keep going a little bit! Go on! Go on, go on! That'll do! We just get the combine in and the header by the looks things. Without the wheels being on the slope wanting to roll off. So I'm just tipping the other load. The other load of barley next door. And this is well, we took off that field little bit short for filling the floor I just have to comb it back a little bit get this dried for tomorrow hopefully and we'll be back on to wheat quick quiz question today actually road compressor use it for like jackhammers and different things like that why do we have it little clue if you think you know leave a comment below combines tucked in the shed for tonight as well that's going cutting wheat or maybe oil seed rape tomorrow that barley, it just needs a little bit more putting on the floor. We're going to have to put some dry stuff on top of it because we've run out of room. The field didn't yield as well as we first thought. So the shed, the floor is a metre deep for the last bit. So Sam's put it on now and then he's bringing dry on top because if there's not enough depth of grain, it'll just dry the first bit first, the easiest flow. So we're going to put more on top of it to slow the fl uh, flow down so it drives evenly. And then obviously it'll go in the other dryer and get cooled which is that one there, which is doing its last batch of wheat now. Seems to have lost me coat, my grey coat. Does anyone remember the last time you saw me wearing it? A couple of days ago, maybe, I don't know. Big screener bucket there. Has he jammed it? No, yet. Yeah. What's he done? Has he not got in the right mode? Not only really can see the size of it, but like, that's like, that's it. it's like half a skip full of stuff. There's all the fires coming out of it. I feel like the spark will come up like a deep over it. Huge that digger. And then hopefully then you should have clean hardcore. Maybe she's done it a little bit more. And then that'll go through the crusher bucket. It's basically just a big version of what we were using last year. And then obviously like it's just one machine loading and emptying it itself. Whereas the screener over there, you've got to feed it and it's huge. This side here next to Richard though, it's massive. It's amazing how fast it, like all the soil falls out of it. And then what you're left with then, like I say, is just clean stuff that'll make really nice crush. They're playing with that now tonight. I'm gonna to go and pick up my dad's birthday present. So I've got an eBay purchase. I need a trailer to go and get it and it's got four wheels. So we're gonna to go to Whitchurch and pick it up now. So I none of you were bidding against me on eBay and that's why it's cost me more than it should have done. Well, it's, I think it's still bought it right money. We're gonna go and pick it up now. If you wanna watch another video, it's over there. If you wanna subscribe, it's over here. Thanks to everyone that's watching. Don't forget if you're a new subscriber, tell me where you're watching from.